Happy Monday morning, everybody. It's windy out here um, on this uh, dreary-ish uh, fall uh, Sunday afternoon. And maybe I've learned a few things. I've actually um, taped up my Bible pages, so hopefully they're not going to blow around on this windy day. But I can't do anything about the microphone, so hopefully you can hear and the wind is coming at um, preferable directions. But as you can see, um, uh, you notice that I am on a track. Um, at the uh, Soldier Field track here. It used to be a cinder track, and uh, we used to have, they used to have track, I bet they still have track and field days out here. They do all types of fun stuff out here. Um, and uh, out here taking a walk on the track. And uh, we're here because we're going to be in 1 Timothy, and 1 Timothy chapter 4, and we're going to be starting at verse 7. And 1 Timothy is a letter to Timothy from Paul. Paul and a veteran, as we all know, in sharing God's word and um, telling the gospel message and caring for churches and helping them through problems. And Timothy's just kind of starting out in this mission. And Paul's sending him letters to kind of help him with, with what he should be doing in these circumstances, certain situations. And uh, this is just a portion of that letter. Of course, 1 Timothy, read the whole thing. It's a short book. Um, you'll enjoy it. Six chapters, fantastic stuff. Um, just a small portion of this letter, um, but it goes along well, the book of Timothy, this whole situation, with our theme for this week in Christ-like servant leadership, which is near and dear to my heart. I work with an organization that's all about Christ-like servant leadership um, called Kindle, and we want to teach other people how to be like a Christ-like servant leader. Um, this weekend, as I was watching uh, the services, and, and uh, Pastor Lowe said, Hey, how many of you are leaders? And barely anybody raised their hands, even though as I looked out there, I'm like, I know they lead at their jobs. I know they're in different leader position, leadership positions here, but no one likes to think of themselves as a leader. I kind of hope that's because with our, you know, humble Minnesota Lutheran upbringing, uh, we don't say we're a leader because, oh, I wouldn't want to put on airs or something like that. And I just do what I can. Um, and Redeemer is full of that type of leader, that I just do what I can. I just help out here and there. But so many of you are just awesome leaders. And many of you are watching this video or will be watching this video this week. So we're going to look at uh, 1 Timothy a little bit. We're going to read just a section of the, the thoughts that Timothy received from Paul, and I think they're helpful for today, uh, helpful for leaders like you. And so here we are in 1 Timothy chapter 4, starting at verse 7, if you want to join me there on this track together. Uh, starts at a weird place. Sorry I picked this, but, but I just <laughs> think this is so fascinating as he starts off. Have nothing, it's really in the middle of a paragraph, I should say. So this isn't the beginning of the thought, but this is where we're starting today. Have nothing to do with godless myths and old wives' tales. Have nothing to do with godless myths and old wives', wives tales. And um, uh, you may not have raised your hand that you are a leader, but you are a leader. A leader to yourself. A leader to family members around you more than you know. A leader to friends and, and other people around you that you're acquainted with more than you know. And... These days, it's all so simple for us on no matter which end of the spectrum you're on to start paying attention to myths and old wives' tales. Uh, it's all over type social media, weird news outlets, all this type of stuff. We've got to be paying attention to what we're listening to. As Paul says, it's been around forever. Even Timothy had to deal with that. So pay attention. Are you listening to the Lord, following his will, seeking his word? Or are you listening to myths and old wives' tales that are leading you astray? There's something more better out there that uh, we want to be involved in over and above old wives' tales. And here we go. Nothing to do with godless myths and old wives' tales. Train yourself to be godly. Train yourself to be godly. What does that mean to train yourself to be godly? Um... I think you can think of a few things. We'll talk about that more. But he puts this up against something else. Train yourself to be godly. For physical training, as we're on the track, working out, doing a little workout here, granted not too hard because I can't be out of breath and talking all the time, 
but uh, uh, physical training um, is of some value. But godliness has value for all things. Train yourself to be godly. And we might say, but doesn't God just give that to us? Isn't that a gift of God? And true, we are justified by grace through faith alone, not of our own doing. We cannot boast about that. Um, we cannot make ourselves um, right with God. But we can train ourselves to be godly. And how do we do that? Oh, let's pray for that person in Mayo 1, or that Mayo 1 is going to get. Uh, Lord Jesus Christ, watch over the, the individual that is either riding in Mail 1 or will be picked up by Mail 1. Give them safe uh, passage to the hospital. Lord, let the uh, physicians and doctors and nurses um, help them with whatever is going on. Um, Lord, pray that your protection and peace be on them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I don't know if you guys do that when ambulances or something pass by. I don't always do it, but when I, when I get on it, I, I think it's a good practice that some people are really good at. Uh, so how do you train to be godly? You train to be godly by being in God's Word, like you're doing today, being in God's Word together. Um, there's, there's dozens and dozens of you do, watching this devotion, maybe even over a hundred of us that do this devotion on a weekly basis. And that is part of being godly, is being God's Word, not just by ourselves, which is good, but together as we train to be godly and we take those laps by ourselves, with friends, with family, train with coaches that know more than us. We sit in prayer together and we seek to actually do what God's word says. It's not just for other people, it's for us. We seek to be godly. For physical training has some benefits, but godly godliness has benefits in all things, Paul says. Godliness has value for all things holding promise for both the present life and the life to come. Now, physical training is awesome for this life. And I hope you guys get out and do some sort of physical training. There's so many different ways. A little shout out to Faithfully Fit Forever. Meets in the, the Redeemer building on Tuesdays and Thursdays. And they do awesome things with getting people fit and in and, and very accessible ways. Um, That's great stuff. And they do it in a godly way because they know that physical training is beneficial in some ways, but godliness is beneficial in all ways. And it has benefit for today and the world to come. Um, and that's what I think a lot of us, we go, well, I want to be a Christian because I want to go to heaven. And that's, that's wonderful. And that's true. And, and Jesus does take us to be with him in heaven uh, because heaven is where he is, right? Um, but the other thing that Christianity does is it gives us hope for today. It is not a thing for the future alone. It is a thing for today. Godliness is a benefit today, and it's not always easy, but it's worth it. Paul says, stay away from those myths and old wives' tales, godless myths and old wives' tales, but train yourself to be godly. Depending on his word, connecting with the family of believers um, as leaders, and we're all leaders. That's what we're looking for. This is a trustworthy saying that deserves full acceptance. The fact that godliness is not just for today, but is for forever. It helps us not just in to go to heaven, but also in what we're doing today. And for this we labor and strive, that we have put our hope in the living God, we have put our hope in the living God who helps us live day by day. That living God that, that came and was incarnate in the shape, in the form of a man, taking on full humanness. He died on the cross without sin to take all of our sins on himself. And he rose conquering sin, death, and the devil. We have put our hope in the living God who is the Savior of all men, all men, but especially of those who believe. Savior of all men, but especially of those who believe. Why does he say it that way? Because God did die for everybody. Everybody has a pathway to salvation. But not everybody knows it. But you know it. And I know it. And I pray that one day at Redeemer, when, when a pastor or anybody says, Hey, who out there is a leader? 
that you all raise your hands and don't think, oh, I, I feel embarrassed because maybe I'm, I'm talking myself up too much, but because you know that Christ died for you and he has put a living hope and a living faith in your heart and that the world needs to know that. And you are especially equipped to go out and share the love of Jesus with others. As every good leader knows, it's not all on our shoulders because good leaders are nothing without all the fam fabulous people that work with them and, and for them and, and make them look like they've got all under control because everybody's pitching in. As a church, we get to do that. And the coolest thing is when we go out there and lead and share God's word with people, God's already at work. He is doing all the tough work. And he wants us to stand up and say, I'm a Christian. And he wants us to share the hope that we have with those people that we see. Because he's working hard on their hearts. But he wants, and he puts us in places to be that final push of the Holy Spirit through our words and through the words of God that help them come into being and come into the family. So you are our leaders. Stay away from missing old wives' tales. Um, keep yourself fit, but godliness is more important. It's good importantness for today. It's got eternal benefits for tomorrow in heaven. And we serve a living God. That living God loves you. And he's put you in a place of leadership um, to share with the world because everybody has been saved by Jesus, but especially you. So what are you going to do about it? What are you going to do with that special gift you've been given? Hide under a bushel? No. We're going to let it shine. Now, my time on the track is done for today. I'm going to head in and warm up my hand. And, uh, um, but first finish by praying with you as we get to celebrate the fact that God loves us. And he's put us in positions of leadership. Just like Timothy. Who felt too young. Maybe not knowledgeable to do the work. But Paul says... Don't let people look down on you because you're young. You're God's leader. And God has called you to that. God loves you for it. But don't forget God's doing the work. You get to join him on his mission. Um, let's pray, you leaders. And let's uh, look at this week and just rejoice that we do have leadership. But God is our leader. And he's doing all the work. But he wants us to look good. <laughs> so he gives us such wonderful credit. Let's pray. Uh, Lord Jesus Christ, we're sometimes a little bashful to be called leaders for you, Lord, um, but who else is a leader if not us? Um, we know your word, we know who you are, and we can share that with others. And Lord, we pray that you give us opportunity and the courage to take those opportunities and share um, your love with others. Um, Lord, uh, keep us away from godless myths. Help us keep our bodies healthy, but our godliness growing every day as we are spend time with you, Lord Jesus. Um, and now, Lord, we know that we are saved, um, but we want to we want to share that with others and help us to be the leaders that can do that. Um, I pray this all um, in your name, as as each of the leaders watching this video has a chance this week to share you with others. I pray this in Jesus' name, Amen. All right, it's a week. Um, a brand new week, Monday morning. You can start your week by being a leader. Um, start off right. You led yourself to devotion today. I'm, I'm proud of you. And now, how else are you going to be a leader this week um, for Jesus, um, following him in his mission? I pray this all in Jesus' name, and it's a wonderful day to, to be alive and be a leader. Um, have a great week, and we'll see you next Monday. Bye.